Glad you're ready. OK. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of follow our guidelines to verify trigonometric um, equations. So all we're trying to do is just say that one side of an equation is equal to the other side of the equation. All right, And so I told you guys to write down these steps so you guys can just kind of follow along. Now, we don't always have to get through all three steps. A lot of times, just one or two steps is all we need. All right. So the first thing is we just want to kind of pick a side to work on. And the side doesn't really matter, but usually we like to pick the side that's going to be the most complicated and whatever you can work on to simplify it. So what we're going to do is you're going to pick a side and then simplify that side so hopefully it's going to look like the other side. And then you can verify that, those, that, um, that you have a true statement or an equation. So what you want to do, a lot of times you know, we say pick the most complicated side. And just re in reality, if you guys go back to step five, just try something. If you don't really know, it doesn't, there's no right or wrong answer. Pick a side and then see what you can do on it. All right? So by looking on this one, I'm going to choose the left side because I know these are not like terms. You could work on something on the right side. But I'm going to maybe try something on the left side. And actually, you know what? I'll show you on the left side, and then we'll do something on the right side. So let's work on the left side first. Um, I want to get this off of the denominator, right? I need, to, I need to get rid of the cosecant. So to get rid of the cosecant, I can multiply by the sine of t on the top and the bottom. By multiplying by the sine of t in the bottom, now I don't have a fraction. And that's good. The reason why I did that, because does this have any fractions over here right now? No. So now I've eliminated the fractions. Then I need to see what does cotangent equal. Well, cotangent equals cosecant squared minus 1 using Pythagorean identities. Yes? OK. So you have sine of t times cosecant squared of t minus 1 equals cosecant t minus sine of t. All right, now you can apply Pythagorean identity or put distributive property. What'd you say? Leave? I, I know, that's why I asked you to move to a different spot, right? So therefore, <laughs> so therefore, now you have sine of t times cosecant squared of t minus sine of t. Now I'm just going to continue working on the left side. So I'm just going to, we know that the right side already equals. Therefore, sine of t times cosecant of t. And remember, cosecant is 1 over sine, right? Mm -hmm. So therefore, I'm just going to be left with cosecant of t minus sine of t, which does that equal what's on the right side? Yeah. Yes. Does everybody see how I got to there to there? Want me to go over that? OK. So remember, ladies and gentlemen, sine of t times cosecant cosecant is equal to 1 over sine, right? So therefore, when I'm multiplying this, I have sine of t times cosecant of t. So therefore, that's 1 over sine of t squared. So therefore, 1, you're just going to be left with 1 over sine, which is cosecant of t. Does that make sense? Yes? Oh. Pythagorean identity. I use my Pythagorean identity if we go there to there. Does anybody have any other questions on that, on this problem? But you guys can see now we verified that the left side is equal to the right side. OK? Good. Now, what I'd like to do is let's try it. Um, let's say some of you are looking at 